everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that's going to be a full face of the worst makeup that I tried in 2021. This is just, you no. Know, Here's for giving second chances, giving these products another chance to shine. Maybe I'll save some of them. These are things that I have decluttered, but let's give them another chance. Let's see if I like them. Probably not though. I'm not really even looking forward to this because some of these things I'm looking at the basket now. I don't, I don't really like them. <laughs> If you haven't been here before, if this is your first video here, hello, my name is Angie, I'm such a lover of beauty makeup. Normally, I love everything beauty makeup related, but I am the kind of person that likes to try everything, I like to review everything, so that you don't have to, and like, it's inevitable, you will run into some duds, and yeah, this is just gonna be a full video of duds. <laughs> if you wanna see some more makeup content on your timeline, if you wanna see some more makeup reviews on timeline, definitely do subscribe, because I, well, normally I upload five videos a week, but right now, it's every day until Christmas, so there's still a couple of days of uploads left. Yeah, I don't have any makeup on now and I have, I already filmed the video of like the worst makeup of 2021. This is just going to be me trying some of them again. Giving some of them another chance just to see maybe they deserve to stay. Who knows? And I will link the video down below which is my worst makeup of 2021. And I'm not going to be using all of those things of course. I have, a, I have a basket of things here that's like not going to be used today but I still don't like it. And I'm also so 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 excited because this video is in collaboration with Morgan Turner. I adore Morgan Turner. I think she is such a good product reviewer. She reviews even more makeup than I do. Like this girl goes through a lot of new makeup and it's just so intriguing to see her use and review makeup. She's been on a really up and up this year. She quit her full-time job. She's doing YouTube full-time now. And in a way she's like me. Like we both love makeup. We love trying a lot of it. Like reviewing stuff so that we can know like everything about everything. Like that's basically like when it comes to makeup, we both love makeup and we want to know everything about everything. And I immediately knew when I was going to film this video again this year because I did a similar video like this last year, like trying the worst makeup of 2020 and I did a full face. I immediately knew that I wanted to ask Morgan if she wanted to do this with me because she also reviews so much makeup and I know, I know from watching her channel that she has also run into some duds and I cannot wait to see what products she will be using and how she's gonna try and make it work for her. Not only is she so good at reviewing makeup, she's also so good at like using makeup and creating looks. She is a professional makeup artist. She does do makeup artists on the side as well. It's just not only doing like makeup for YouTube. She's also like a makeup artist. Definitely go and subscribe to her. I will leave a link to her down below. Let's dive into some of these products. Why am I so excited? There's nothing to be excited about here. <sighs> I'm going out for wine with a friend after this. I think I'm gonna have to redo my makeup. I had so many people saying that they really loved the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation from Shiseido. So I wanna give this another chance because I didn't like it. I thought it was super heavy and just visible on the skin. I have it in 250 sand. I just didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't think that this was that good. I'm gonna see if I can use as little as possible. I do think that this is a really good shade for me. Can I move the mirror a bit closer? I can. I just felt like this looked so visible on the skin, even though like it's so thick. And also this is the radiant version and it looks extremely radiant on my skin. Maybe this is like one shade too light. It is what it is. It is what it is. It just looks so extremely glowy and like not even glow greasy it looked greasy on my skin after just like a couple of hours i'm gonna be honest like extremely greasy and it's not that blendable either like it's pretty thick so even if you try to use a little it doesn't really spread that much i don't know i just think that this looked heavy I have normal skin type, like I am not oily, I'm not dry, so for me to get extremely like oily, greasy skin with this after just a couple of hours, it tells me that maybe this is more for if you have like very dry skin, because for me, I don't know. Kind of looks good like this though, although I will say it does look a little heavy. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna make that work, right? We're gonna make that work. Look at me being positive. Let me move my phone before I spill something on it. I was toying with the idea of trying the Glowish, uh, the Dew skin tint again, but I just, I, I don't like, I don't like that one. Another thing that I really did not like, I can't believe I'm using this again, this is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer. Last time I used this, I threw it across the room. <laughs> I love how dramatic I'm being. It's like a reality show, but I'm gonna use very little. This is very full coverage and very light. 
very full coverage and it just looked extremely textured under my eyes. I'm gonna use extremely little, like I'm using the word extremely, extremely often. So we're just gonna use a very little and see if we can get this to not look. It just looks so textured and just heavy. All of this makeup just looked heavy and I'm not even super against a full coverage look, but I don't want it to look so obvious that I'm having like a film of makeup on and this one just did not look good under my eyes and we'll see how it looks today. Yeah, it just looks so textured under my eyes. And I mean, I do have textured under eyes, but I don't need a concealer to accentuate that. But I did use very little, so maybe I'll get away with it. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers and hope for the best. Okay. If I use very little, I could get away with it. But like, I'm not loving the coverage and I'm not loving the finish. I don't have a under eye powder that I want to use, but listen, I don't want to use this one either, but here we are. This is the Glow Wish by Huda Beauty. This is the... In Sweden, this was marketed as a finishing powder, but I know that it's sold as a powder foundation. On the back, it says a luminous pressed powder. I don't really know exactly what she meant for this to be. Um, but I am i didn't really like this one. I thought it was way too glowy. It looked so glowy that it almost looked ashy on the skin because there were so much glow particles in it. And it does have some coverage, but maybe if I just use it a little bit it is like darker than foundation as well so maybe that's good maybe I can use this as a little bit of bronzer because I don't have a bronzer to use so maybe if I put this oh and I'm supposed to use a cream blush I'm a mess that's okay I am NOT gonna use this around here because this is so glowy that if I use it around there it just finds and accentuates pores I just did not even know I had it is a time machine but in the wrong direction it literally ages me because it makes me look so textured and it's not the look i'm going for this though is darker than the foundation i'm having on and it does have some coverage so i do think that there is a there is a point to this being a a like a powder foundation i like it more when i'm just using it out here in the perimeters and just not using it here because this is just too glowy actually i don't hate it on the outer perimeter Look at me, maybe I should just not try and make this work because I wanted this to work like my NYX powder works. I have the high glass uh, finishing powder from NYX and that one is shimmery but not like poor emphasizing in the same way as this is. So that one I can use like all over and it just looks really good. This one I cannot do that with. So if I just use it out here, you know what, it actually looks pretty good. Color me surprised. Okay, I decluttered all of my cheek dues by Colourpop. I didn't think that these were that good. Look at how separated this is. Wait, you can't see anything. Like, do you see that? What is this? What? What is? What is? Ew! What is this? Ew! Ew! Okay, I'm gonna see if I can use one of these. Let me use this one that's called Starfruit. Um, I'm gonna put some on. I don't like hate hate this, but it's far from a favorite like I, I some of them the more deeper color I feel looks better on the skin the lighter colors just look a little bit patchy and sheer in a non-flattering way and I've described these as adding the kind of color to your cheeks that you're trying to cover up it's like you're trying to cover up your redness and then the serum blush just looks like that patchy redness you're trying to cover up don't like the finish of this at all. And also now I did put it on top of powders. I mean, surfacing me right, but I just, there's something about how these go on. They're a little bit blotchy. They're, they, they just look like a rash. I'm not a fan. Like there are so many good blushes on the market, creams, liquids, powders. Like why would you pick this? Ew. Well, maybe if you squint a little bit, that looks okay. I mean, I did use it now on top of powder as well, but I have used it before powder and I didn't like it then either, so... It's not just me, okay? It's not just me. 
let me tell you. I do have this one as well, but I need to... I, let's save highlighters for the end because this highlighter is so sticky that it's gonna catch all like eyeshadow fallout and just grab onto it. Let's save lips as well. Let, uh, I'm not really giving eyeshadow a chance with this primer. This is the Milk Makeup Grip Primer. It's not a grip primer. It's a slip primer. It, it literally does nothing. Uh, it's no color. It's no grip. It is just like a greasy silicone mess. You're supposed to let this set. It's just so greasy and slippy. I don't understand. Don't understand. So I am gonna go and just like start with my eyebrows a bit while I let this I don't know like it feels like I'm putting you know what it feels like it feels like I'm putting lip balm it feels like I'm putting lip balm on my lids and they're like let it dry down how why or more importantly why okay my brows turned a little wild but <laughs> doesn't matter because now I'm gonna go in with this one. I usually do a little bit of shadowing. Oh, there's a big hair here. I usually do a little bit of shadowing with a brow powder, whatever brow powder to be honest, something that's lighter than my brows. And then I use some kind of a either felt tip or a brush tip applicator. I prefer a brush tip applicator and I like draw in a little hairs to make my brows look a little fuller than they are. I'm just trying to convince people that I have more brow hairs than I do. This one is the Feather Effect Brow Pen from Colourpop and the, the tip of this one is so little, but I've only used this a couple of times and it's already almost dried out and the tip is already frayed. So it doesn't matter if the tip is super small, if it's gonna fray like so fast that also, this one is really small and really short. That so doesn't give you those effortless, like, but they say feather strokes. It's pretty like stiff and small and it just doesn't really work as good as the one from NYX does. That's all I'm trying to say. The one from NYX, it will cost you about the same price. It will have a brush tip applicator, which is better and will last you longer. And you can see now there's almost no color now because it's like out. Wait, let me see if I can... And now I have to press a little harder and then it doesn't matter that the applicator is so small because since I have to press harder, the, the hairs will become thicker because that's how, that's how felt tip liners are. And that's why I always will prefer something that's... Oh my god, this looks horrible. Oh my god, this looks horrible. <laughs> why color pop? <sighs> This just isn't a good product. It runs out too quickly. It, the, the tip is too small and too stiff. That's what she said. It just doesn't work. In theory, it's smart to have a small tip like this so you can make really easy like feather-like hair like strokes, but it only works if it is a if it is a brush tip applicator. When there is a felt tip applicator, it just frays more quickly, it dries out more quickly, it just doesn't create the brows that they say they're gonna create. It just looks messy and just childlike. It just looks like childlike. It looks like I use an actual crayon. I don't like it at all. I'm not a fan. I don't think it's a good product. Here's something else that's been very hyped this year and I don't really like it for my brows. It's not, listen, nothing's gonna help this. <laughs> There is no amount of magic to help this situation that's going on right now, but this is the Brow Freeze from Anastasia. Let me get my spoolie back. The reason why I don't like this one for my brows, let me just use a spoolie here. The reason why I don't like this for my brows, it's not that I think that this is like a really like horrible product. It is that it's called a Brow Freeze and it is most definitely not a freeze on my brows. It will make my brow hairs stand up, yes but they will go down they will go back down with time so i don't think it is a brow freeze it is just a brow temporarily style them don't expect them to look like this all day because they're not that's what they are for me and my brow hairs i know of other people that like they stay up all day and they really think that this like works good for their brows i'm not that person for me it doesn't freeze my brows Maybe I need to use it a bit more. Maybe I need to use it with a different technique. I don't know. If you have any suggestions of how to use it, please let me know. Nothing can save these brows today after that 
fantastic brow pen from Colourpop, but I'm just not making this product, like now I think they look great, but I just know from after using this before that it doesn't stay like that. And it's just very frustrating. I don't know. Please let me know. How are you making this work? How are you doing it? Am I, am I using it in the wrong way? Am I using too little? Am I using too much? I feel like when I use more, it stays up better. Ooh, someone's here to look at the apartment. But it stays up better, but then you can see it in the brows. And I don't want my brows to look like wet. That's not smart either. We have people looking at our apartment because we're moving. And the people coming now are the people that's going to move into this apartment. Can you believe we're moving in just a couple of weeks? When you're seeing this video, this whole studio is already packed down. Isn't that crazy? Okay, some time has passed because we had some visitors. It's so crazy to think that we are not going to live here in a little bit. That's just very crazy. Did I lower the camera? I feel like I did. Wait, I don't know if I did. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. It is what it is. Let's do some eyeshadows. Let's do some eyeshadows. I did use a little bit of my favorite powder under my eyes. I mean, it's okay when you use very little, but it's looking very, let me see if I can actually show you. I think you can see that it has settled into my lines here, the foundation and that it's looking a little like dry and crusty on my under eyes, which is crazy because this is like the creamy concealer and I don't feel like that is what it is. I don't feel like that is what this is, but maybe I'm picky, who knows. Whoops, I'm gonna be using two different eyeshadow palettes. These were in my like worst makeup of 2021. Not that I necessarily think that these are awful quality, but these brands sure as hell can do better than this, okay? They can do better than this. And this is the Beach Cosmetics and Doja Cat uh, collaboration. This is the mega palette and it is mega for sure. It is so big, so big. And honestly, pretty mediocre. Some shades are incredible. Some shades, a lot of shades are pretty mediocre. It's just very big and pretty. I don't know, I just, Beach Cosmetics makes amazing eyeshadows. They can make incredible eyeshadows that really like rival high-end brands. This isn't that, this is drugstore makeup with some really amazing shades instead of being a palette of amazing shades. And I'm just very disappointed that that is the route that they took with this collab palette. And this Naked Cyber by Urban Decay, this had the potential of being an amazing palette. This had the potential of being like a palette with like all shimmery special shades and duochromes and sparkly shades. And it's just very weak and pretty mediocre. And I'm just, I want better for Urban Decay than this because this was a good idea. I just did not like the execution. I think I am gonna do, I'm gonna keep it a little bit simple. I'm gonna keep it a little bit simple. I kinda wanna do something with the orchid shade here, the pink. The mattes were not really the problem in this palette. Let me put it like that. I'm gonna start with this one that's called Growth, uh, which is like a mauve-y mauve shade for the crease. And then we have, of course, this primer as well. So this primer is not really, I mean, you can get a lot more pigmentation from this palette if you actually use a primer that works as a primer and not as a glorified lip balm. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with Orchid, which is that bright pink shade. And this one is a nice matte shade. I just wish that, I just, I don't know. I just wish that this palette was more, although I will say that this Primer is not really doing this shadow any favors. <laughs> oh, it's just a symphony of disappointments, isn't it? Now I'm using the shade Canopy, which is the dark, like, charcoal black. It's the last shadow in the palette. I feel like, if nothing else, this video is a testament at to how important a good eye primer is. Because this eye primer doesn't grip onto shadows, and it makes mediocre shadow look even more mediocre and that's the thing a really good eye primer can save a mediocre eyeshadow but a really good eyeshadow will struggle with a bad eye primer and i mean the problem with this um bh cosmetics palette wasn't really that it was like awful quality or that the mattes weren't that good it was that they were not as pigmented and not as fun and impactful and especially the shimmers were not as like the normal palettes from BH Cosmetics. But now that I use it with a not so good like eye primer, it truly looks fairly mediocre. So yeah, I, 
I don't understand this eye primer. It's just not a very good primer. I don't, I don't, what is it for? Why is it called a grip primer? It just makes everything look meh. Like, look at this. It's just meh. Doesn't grip on the pigment, it just slips and slides around, everything like muddies together, you can't really make things stick on the eye. I just, I, I don't understand, I don't understand who said this was okay. This is looking very patchy uh, and not very pigmented and like just pretty disappointing, pretty disappointing. What is my computer doing? Stop that, nobody asked for that. Um, I'm gonna use a shimmer from this palette. What do I wanna use? I know that I used this like reddish green, I think, when I did the look. None of these are really looking super bright. Maybe I'll use, maybe I'll use this one, the more pinky one. Or should I use the this one, the gold pink? No, I'll use the call it the one that's like a little pinky one. Um, I try to really dig in so that I can get a lot of my brush and I'm gonna spray it to give this the best chance that it can have, even though this situation is not looking that fun. So, this is like, it's a nice shimmer. It's a nice shimmer. Is it an extreme duochrome? Not really. Will this blow your socks off if you were expecting to get a palette filled with duochromes and special shades? Absolutely not. It's a baby pink shimmer. It's a baby pink shimmer. I'll put it a bit over here so we can cover up the patch. <laughs> the things you do to cover up the patchiness. I mean, it's nice. Am I blown away? Not really. Was this worth $60? I'll argue no. I mean, it's not horrible, but I'm also not like, wow, your makeup look is so nice, Angie. What did you use? It's more like, what did you use so we can avoid it? I'm gonna use some of the matte white. It is called Feline. I do love a matte white in the corner. So I really appreciate that there's a matte white in here, even though you can see it is not very pigmented, but it's something. It is something and it is helping a little bit. Let us use some of this highlighter. I also have this highlighter. I can use one on each and you can see this one looks stunning. This is the one from Vive. This is, I think it's called Do Something. Uh, it is like a, let me show you here. It is like a, a warm, not, not warm, but not too cool toned or icy champagne that's more of a medium color that has a transparent base. This is the Skin Dew Glow Multitasker. This one is stunning. The problem with this one is that it doesn't dry down, so it leaves your skin tacky. But if I use very little, let's see if I use very little, because I love the look of this, I just didn't love how it felt. It's very sticky. Let's leave that for a bit and see how that is. And let's go into another disappointment, and that is the Anastasia Iced Out Highlighter. This is just so pretty. The packaging, every, everything but the product. Like, I'm really going in, but it's just... It looks dusty. It looks dry. It's just... It looks like a weak shimmer eyeshadow. It's just not that... I, I, there are honestly so many highlighters that can do better than this and look more healthy and fresh on the skin than this for a fraction of the price, if we're gonna be honest. I love everything about this highlighter, but the product, like the packaging, the embossing, everything is so pretty, but just this isn't pretty. This is pretty though, but it is, it is fly paper sticky. Fly paper sticky. I'm gonna leave that for a bit and we'll see how I feel about that once I like finish the look up. Let's use the worst lip product that I've used this year and that is so easy. It is the NYX Shine Loud, these liquid lipsticks that has a color here like that you paint on like a liquid lipstick that dries down and it has a gloss on the other side. Let's use this color that's a little bit more on the mauve like uh, purpley side and then there's a see-through gloss to make it more comfortable. The problem with this is that this color is so sticky that it is like unbearable. Like literally unbearable. It is pigmented though and that is a really beautiful color. Let me see what is this color? This color is 
Is it called Next Gen Thinking? Or what is this color? I honestly have no idea. I'll put it down below. Okay, so here we are. I have the lip color on, not the gloss, because look at this. Like the color separates and it's just so sticky, but let's put the gloss on. Let's put the gloss on. It's all gonna be fine. It's so patchy, but I don't care. I don't care. The thing is with this lip product, when you have the gloss on, it is super comfortable. But if you accidentally put your lips together before you put the gloss on, as you can see, the color will lift. The thing is that this gloss has the longevity of a coffee break. So you're gonna have to reapply this all the time. Otherwise, your lips will go back to being sticky you will get patchy lips and just, it's just a stupid product. Yes, the color of this lipstick, it is gonna last you all day, as long as you put gloss on every five minutes. But then you're still reapplying, like what's the point? What's the point? I didn't like this product at all. And also, to get this off, why did I even put this on? I'm supposed to go out after this. This eyeshadow is a wreck. The thing is, to take this gloss off, it's a mission. Like, you need sandpaper. You think oil remover is going to do it? Mm -mm. You are in for, uh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> it's so hard to get off. And it's like, yeah, long wearing is lovely, but I don't want to have to wear it to bed. Like, I, unless I like go in with a sheet grater and like take it off. Not a big fan, not a big fan of any of this. Let me just put on some mascara. I'm like, listen, false lashes with this look. It might save this situation though, but I'm just gonna put on some mascara, I'll zoom out, and we can just have a final chat about it, these products. Is anything worth saving? Because I think I am gonna fetch one of these items out of the, the clutter box. Okay, so here we are. At least this mascara is really good. This is the Extensions Effect Mascara by um, Makeup Geek. It is a really, really good mascara, so that's at least saving some of it. Look at how patchy this is because I accidentally pushed my lips together while it was like... <sighs> I don't like makeup that I have to jump through burning hoops to make work. This lipstick, uh, lip product is definitely that. This eye primer is definitely that. This is so sticky, like I don't like that. I want to love that one, but I just really don't. I love how it looks. It looks so fresh. But maybe if you have more dry skin, this would be better for you. For me, I don't know. I don't know how to make this work. And especially now, everyone's telling me like, oh, it's so humid in Texas. Like, what am I going to do with this? It's going to slide off my face. What am I going to do with... Is this the worst product that's been released this year? It might be. Because this, like, look at this eyeshadow. I mean, the problem with the BH Cosmetics and Doja Cat palette wasn't really the mattes. But this primer is making the mattes look like something that I fished out of the bargain bin at, like, Dollar Tree. Like, I don't understand. Like, it's honestly not that fun. And look at this shimmer. Look at this shimmer and tell me that this is, like, a duochrome special shade. There's nothing about this shimmer that is exciting. Like, I don't understand the marketing of this palette at all. All in all... I dislike still all of these products, except I really liked how this one looks around the perimeters on my face. Am I gonna save it? And I'm gonna save it and use it like that? Actually, I might. Because I do tend to reach for my pressed powders more than my loose powder. I got rid of all my loose powders. <laughs> Let's just put it like that. I'm just not gonna try and make this work as an all over face powder because it doesn't work like that. And I'm trying to make it work like that, but it just does not work like that. So I think I'm gonna keep this and see if I will use it just around the perimeter of my face because it looks really beautiful like that. But this makeup look, it's a train wreck. I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm not gonna go and see my friend looking like this. Maybe she like squints. Are we going somewhere dark? Huh. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Do let me know down below which ones were your worst product that you tried this year, or maybe you didn't try any bad products at all. If you didn't, kudos to you. I mean, it is it is part of my job to try out makeup, and you, it's inevitable that you're gonna run into some products that doesn't work for you, or that you think are not really that good. And makeup is like all about preferences as well. So if I dislike something that you love, that's totally fine. It doesn't mean that I'm right and that you're wrong. It only means that we have different tastes or different preferences when it comes to makeup. I cannot wait to see what Morgan Turner is doing. I cannot wait to see her look. I cannot wait to see the product that she is like picking as a full face of... Uh, 
this lip product. Blah. Like a full face of the worst products. I will of course link her down below. I am so excited to see your video. Don't forget to check her out. And that's gonna be it for this video. I am gonna have a video tomorrow as well. We are still in the middle of my version of Vlogmas. So tomorrow, new video. I don't really know what it is because I am pre-filming it, but stay tuned. New video tomorrow. Bye!